Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. Although it's been a while since Intel's X299 platform and Skylake X CPUs came out, I finally have a chance to check it out thanks to this Astrox X299 Tai Chi model, which I this time have in front of me, together with Intel's Core i7-7820X. So let's get right into it. Right off the bat you can notice that Astrock went in new direction design and color scheme wise when it comes to their Tai Chi series, which is something I've noticed while roaming around Computex booth floors back in June. Instead of the black and white theme, now we have this dark grey, silverish color scheme, but they still kept the time and clock theme details around the motherboard, like this cool passive heatsink for the chipset. Speaking of it, just above the CPU socket you'll find another passive heatsink cooling for the VRMs which are coupled with Nishikon 12K black caps, premium 65 amp power chokes and other upgraded components which are part of feature set for the Astrox super alloy power design, while right next to it on the left a plastic dark grey shroud that covers the back I.O. and the MEI shielded portion of the audio circuitry. Since I'm already here, I.O. is pretty hefty as it should be for an enthusiast level platform and chipset with a bunch of USB ports in focus from USB 2 to USB 3.1 Gen 2 and Gen 1 ports, 2 gigabit LAN ports, Wi-Fi antenna connections for the 802.11ac Wi-Fi and BIOS flashback and BIOS clear switches. As for the audio circuitry beneath the cover hides Realtek's latest ALC1220 audio codec paired with Nishikon gold caps, TI's and E5532 premium headphone amplifier, gold-plated audio jacks and other technologies like DTS Connect and Purity Sound 4. Surrounding the socket from the left and right side we have a total of 8 DDR4 DIMM slots capable of taking up to 128GB of RAM with speeds up to 4400MHz using XMP 2.0 profiles if the CPU and IMC allows it of course. Also have in mind that some of the lower end CPU models for the X299 lineup do not support quad channel configurations so you'll be limited to only 4 slots instead of 8. Going below that you can see that we have a plethora of PC Express slots as well as M.2 slots and that's a total of three of them squeezed between the PC Express slots all being ultra M.2 slots with support up to 32 gigabit per second of bandwidth. Moving back to the PC Express slots you can see that beside one lonely PC Express X1 2.0 slot we have four full length PC Express X16 slots supporting up to quad SLI or crossfire multi GPU setups while their electrical configuration varies from slot to slot and from user scenario to user scenario and especially depending on the CPU which you plan to use since X299 platform has CPU models that support anywhere from 16 to 44 total PCI Express lanes. Another place you can find a bunch of ports is on the motherboard's right side where we have a total of 10 SATA 3 ports for which you'll in the bundle get 4 SATA cables alongside of the antennas for the Wi-Fi, IO shield and one two-way and one three-way SLI bridge. Going further along that edge you can also see two USB 3.0 headers, one under 90 degree angle, 24 pin ATX power header and an RGB LED header. Another RGB LED header can be found on the bottom edge in the left corner alongside of your standard headers for the USB 2.0, audio, TPM, front panel and of course the 8 pin EPS power connector at the top which is more situated on the right half of the motherboard and of course fan and pump headers, 5 of them in total, scattered around the motherboard. In the right corner you've also probably noticed the debug LED screen which is always a great add-on, it's just too bad they didn't implement a dedicated power on and reset switch on the board itself. Of course this wouldn't be a high-end motherboard if it didn't have some RGB LED lighting on it and X299 Tai Chi model wasn't an exception of course, although it didn't have a lot to offer in that field as beside the two RGB LED headers which I've mentioned before, you'll only get just a glowing ring beneath the chipset's passive heatsink which will probably be covered with the GPU for the most part. You can control them using Astrox RGB LED software app in Windows or by going into the UEFI BIOS and there you can choose between different colors and lighting effects. 
As for the performance of the motherboard so to speak, I've ran a few benchmarks which I've used in the past for my motherboard reviews. Just your basic one since performance difference from motherboard to motherboard in most cases doesn't go beyond of your margin of a measurement error if you use the same CPU and RAM setup. As I said at the beginning, the CPU in question was the beastly 8 core 16 thread Core i7-7820X paired with a total of 16GB of Corsair's LPX 2800MHz squad channel kit. Checking out the motherboard's UEFI BIOS in detail, right off the bat you can see that this is your usual example of ASRO's newer generation UEFI BIOS design and layout, just with the modified background picture so to speak, to fit the color scheme and motherboard's Tai Chi series theme, and overall it's very similar to their current generation Z270 motherboards. Being an enthusiast grade motherboard, just like with the previous Intel's X99 generation, the X299 also comes in with number of of different settings by default, especially when it comes to overclocking. We have an extended voltage, memory and CPU configuration menus for the more hardcore users, but you can also find some more user-friendly stuff like the fan configuration settings through graphs or menus. You can control majority of these settings using ASRock's A-tuning software in Windows, although I still prefer to stick with UEFI BIOS as I personally find it more reliable and familiar. Although it's easy to get lost among everything, thankfully ASRock offers its easy mode menu and beside that a few preset overclocking profiles which in my case turn out to be spot on. Despite me using the 4.6GHz profile for the OC settings, the 4.7GHz one was also working just fine, but I couldn't use it since it needed a lot of voltage, 1.35V in order to get it stable. For that I definitely need a more capable cooling solution and even delete the CPU or to be precise change its IHS TMI. Even at 4.6 GHz and with 1.28 to 1.3 volts, it was peaking from 90 to 100 degrees Celsius so I wouldn't be surprised if the CPU throttled a bit, although I had a pretty consistent performance gain against the stock clock scenario. Of course all of this is CPU and cooling related and it's not implicating the motherboard itself. All in all, we got ourselves a very well-rounded motherboard model, which is something that Tai Chi series was sort of known for, even in its previous iteration. Although it's expensive as it's a part of the X299 platform, it's still so to speak affordable when we know in which segment it falls into. 
that's it guys for this time from me thank you once again for watching feel free to toss me a thumbs up if you like what you saw that really helps me a lot leave a comment down below if you have any questions about this product or if you want to leave your suggestions and of course feel free to subscribe for content further down the line or you can just check out some of my other videos from before until then catch you later guys